Hey, what's up and welcome back. This is the Program Geek and welcome back to another video on the Program Geek Slab Detailing 101. Getting preview with Slab Detailing in short and concise lessons. And in today's video, we're now moving on. We did some general notes and now we continue with some general notes. I think in the previous video, we looked at the illustrations or what I recommend when learning. You can always check out those videos, links in the description below. But in today's video, we're going to continue with the general notes and we're going to start by looking at the spacing of rebars in solid slabs. So without wasting too much time, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first things first, if this is your first time coming to the channel, please leave. Yes, leave a comment, leave a like, but also remember, subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell. I think I kind of lost my foot in there, but please don't worry about it. So please do all those four things. And once you're done, we can get started with the video. And once you're done, let's go. So now that you are done, first things, let me just say in the previous video, I started talking about different uh, positions, B inch, B S C, B tech, whatever. Uh, let me just say something, man. It doesn't matter what you have or if you it, it doesn't even matter if you went to school for engineering. As long as you have an interest in structural engineering, even if you're an architect or whatever you are, and you're watching my videos, man, what more can I ask for? This is the best thing. So the only thing you need in life that you need to understand is what do you want to do and what are you? What do you want to do in life? You know? So if you're interested in structural engineering, it doesn't matter whatever you went to school for, just get the knowledge as much as you can, you know, and improve yourself. It's all it's all about that. Look at me, man. I'm doing food, I'm in the food industry. But I went to school for this and who would have known, man, I don't even have a degree in agriculture, whatever it is, or social governance, whatever it is, things that come into place. But in the industry that I am right now, it's, it is what it is. So just do what you can do to improve yourself and it is what it is going to be. So please forgive me if this is your first time and you saw me rambling without even getting to the general notes. I'm sorry, but I'm going to leave in the description if you just want to skip the entry go to the two minute mark and we still started. So let me stop rambling and let's actually get started with or continue with our general notes. Okay, so to continue with the general notes, I think the first thing that we now need to look at after we looked at how to illustrate or present your work when you're detailing is the spacing of rebars. So remember, we're just doing solid slabs. We're not doing waffle slabs. We're not doing, what do you call this? Uh, ribs, yeah, rib slabs. What we're going to be doing is solid slabs, which could be either conventional or flat. So this is what we're going to be looking at. Most of what we're going to be doing is going to be on solid slabs. So when it comes to the spacing of your rebars in solid slabs, because some of you may be asking, why did you put 250? I'm sure I put 250. Yes, it was 250. Why did you put 250? Why is it always 200? Because I see a lot of people, especially people who don't know what they're doing. They usually just put 200, 135, 200, 135, depending on what they're doing. Um, there is a reason for that, but you know, there's a reason for your spacing. Your spacing is dictated by your design, but then there's some things that we say there's the minimum spacing and the maximum spacing. So after looking at all the codes that are available, I've seen that SANS 101 44 is more straightforward. It just says the minimum allowable pitch is 75 millimeters and 100 millimeters for laps. That is wherever you have two bars joining each other. It's better to leave 100 millimeters, but wherever you have just bars running through the entire length, the minimum pitch is 75. But as a rule of thumb, what I'm just going to say is the program gig says make it 100 millimeters every time. And the reason for this is why vibrators and pokers, I have a video where I talk about this. And if you want, link in the description, you can go to that video and also learn more about detailing according to sands and the beers. So just remember, it's best as you can see trying to change it from 75 to 100 is difficult practically in the field so the best thing is because most of the times you're always going to have a lap in your slab so just stick to 100 and also because most vibrators uh the diameter is usually 100 millimeters yes you're going to have some diameters which is 40 but most people will just get 100 millimeter or 90 80 millimeter diameter poker so that it's heavy duty and can do a lot of slabs elements columns whatever it does so just try and stick to 100 millimeters as your minimum spacing in any slab don't go lower than that and where is the spacing normally dictated as you can see i've illustrated that out minimum bar spacing is 75 but make it 100 
And as you can see in this case, it's saying six white cups. Let me just zone it. As you can see, these are the six bars. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. And what it is saying is six white twelves. Bar mark A, 75. Center to say spacing at B1. So this 75 indicates the bar spacing. So the maximum spacing now is a different ball game altogether. It depends on the depth of the slab. Yes, unlike the minimum, you know, the minimum is for any depth of slab. But when it comes to the maximum, it has to depend on the thickness of your slab. Right. So what am I trying to say? So if you have a slab that is 200 millimeters or less, remember this is 8 inches or less, right? Uh, I've, I've illustrated it out for you. So D is the thickness of the slab. And D, the small D, is the effective depth to the center of your bottom still. As you, as you can see, it's clear history. Let me just put a construction line so that maybe you can see what I'm trying to say. There we go, to the center of the bottom still. And obviously, you're going to have the bar diameter. You should know the diameter of your bars. So what is, because the bar diameter is going to be given by the design. So the maximum spacing that you should put, in this case, spacing X, is going to be 2 multiplied by the effective depth plus the diameter of the bar. So to illustrate that, for example, let's say the design said you use 10 millimeter bars and the slab is a 200 millimeter thick slab. And in this case, you have 10 millimeter bars and the effective depth that is from the top of the concrete to the center of the bottom bars is going to be 170. Um, the maximum spacing is going to be 350 millimeters. Now, remember, spacing is used to x2 multiplied by d plus the bar diameter. In this case, it's going to be 2 multiplied by 170 plus the diameter of your bar. If you think I'm lying, you can always calculate it on your own. Smiley face. But come on, 2 times 170 gives you 340 plus 10. That gives you 3. So the maximum spacing for this slab, if you're going to be using 10 millimeter diameter bars, is definitely going to be 350. But as you can see, if it's going to, if you're going to be using 12 millimeter diameter bars, then obviously it's going to increase because it's going to be 352. But then that doesn't make sense. Just just stick it to 350. I think it really changes when you're using 20 millimeter diameter bars because now you can use a spacing of. Uh, 360 no you can't use the spacing of 360 as well i'm going to explain why you can't use the spacing of 360 much later on but in this case the maximum spacing is 350 because the spacing of your brie bar is always going to be covered by the code and before we actually get to that point uh, for slabs more than 200 millimeters well the best thing is there's a table that governs that it's going to be table 14 this is from SANS 10144, which gives you the maximum spacing of bars for high yield steel in slabs of thickness exceeded 200 millimeters. So this is the table 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Position of reinforcement, if this is at the span, if it's going to be at the support, and then you have the maximum spacing, okay, in millimeters and amount of tension reinforcement percentage growth. So this is the amount of tension reinforcement, and that is to say, I think we, we talked about this when we were looking at the maximum and minimum reinforcement. Uh, as in when we were talking what is the percentage of steel that is available so what you just need to understand is what steel do you need to provide and what's uh, the area that you'll be using so in this case if you want to provide up to 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.8 0 0.9 1.0 so it just tells you that uh, the span if the percentage is going to be 0 0.5 then the span maximum spacing is 350 and as you can see as the percentage of steel you are going to provide increases the spacing reduces in this case it goes to 175 same as for the support so the support is going to be always have a smaller spacing than the span because at the support the moment tends to be huge when it's a hogging moment okay the hogging moment always tends to be huge as opposed to the bending moment that is why you have moment reduction i think we talked about this in another video so as I say, this is difficult to give an illustrated example without a real project. And just remember, this is going to be for the main still. And But the best thing I'll tell you is just stick to this table and you are done. You won't have to stretch yourself too much. And this is the reason why I was saying a spacing of 360 does not work. This is because this is from the code now. It's important to note the spacing increments. The code says uh, for up to 200, your spacing needs to go in this pattern. Or has to follow this the step or this fashion is just start off with 75 go to 100 that is an increment of 25 then go to 125 150 175 and 200 i also have a video where i talked about this it's the same video link in the description below 
And so as you can see before it's the minimum spacing is was said to be 75. So from 75 to 200, you have to space it out as 75, 100, 125, 150, 175. If you don't start putting it, say, bars at 90 minutes, you don't do that. It's stipulated by the court. So that's the other thing. You just don't pull figures from where the sun doesn't shine. It's not dependent on you. It's dependent on the code. And after 200 millimeters, the spacing increment has to be in stages of 50. So in this case, 250, 300, 350, 400, 450, and you have 500. So this is basically it when it comes to the spacing of Reba. Now I think you understand the spacing of Reba. Uh, I think you know where it is written in the notation, what the minimum is, minimum 75, but as a rule of thumb, keep it at 100. And the spacing, maximum spacing is dependent on the thickness. For slabs less than 200, we talked about it. And for slabs more than 200, it's given in the table. You just have to stick to it. And also the spacing increments for up to 200 and up to 200 millimeters. So we don't want to keep this video or we don't want to make it too long. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap it up here, right? To make it short and concise. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at the diameter of bars used in slab and also the rebar lab lens and the notations. I think I can cover this in one video. But for this one, I think we do, we're just looking at the spacing of rebar in slabs. So without wasting too much time and dragging this video, please subscribe if this is your first time. And also remember, stay safe, stay good, and whatever you do, man, as long as you like the videos and you're interested in structural engineering, this is the place for you. Who cares what you did in life? Just do you, man.